Welcome everyone to Shannon's Curious. Uh, I'm very happy tonight to have a very special guest, uh, an internationally known spiritualist. And spirituality seems to be a lot uh, in people's minds today. So we're just so thrilled. She's a well-known writer. She's been published by many of the major book companies in the country. And so we're just thrilled to have Dr. Susan Szymanski here with us tonight. Welcome, Susan. I'm so glad to be here with you tonight, Norman. Yeah, I have some loaded questions to ask you right off the bat. Okay, go, uh, go ahead, you know, go for it. Spirituality is, is, is a lot, and I'm very much interested in spirituality, as is Julia and many people around the world. Uh, how do you define spirituality? Well, spirituality me means being in direct contact with spirit with a capital S. Mm -hmm. In my definition, that means being in touch with your own inner nature, your higher self, okay. and being able to express that in a practical way in everyday life. Mm -hmm. I think that people are looking for something other than that. They don't realize it's within themselves, and they can open that up, and I think that's wonderful. Uh, I was going to ask you another question. Have you found your approach to spirituality to be in conflict with any of the ultra-conservative right uh, religious groups around the world? Because you, you've been all over the place. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely, very much in conflict. Mm. Because what they're looking at is they're looking at authority outside of themselves. <laughs> they want to like, follow along the strict guidelines of a particular norms, particular ideals, a dogma, whereas my approach to spirituality is going within and finding the answers within yourself and being led by spirit with a capital S rather than being led by doctrines, dogmas, mm -hmm. authority figures outside of yourself. So that's very much in conflict with very conservative kinds of, uh, let's say, fundamentalist kinds of religions yeah, I, I, of every I'm stripe. Is the word, yes. I'm not uh, talking I'm about politics, to, I'm talking about religion. Yeah. I'm glad to hear you say that. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's so much uh, conflict over what we mean by spirituality, and everybody thinks, oh, you're talking about religion, and you're not you're talking about something that's in you, in the individual, and that's wonderful. It comes from the self to begin with. Uh, you mentioned in one of your videos, divine guidance. What do you mean by divine guidance? You know, if you can manage to learn how to listen to the still small voice within and learn how to be in direct contact mm -hmm. with the divine aspect of your being or with the deity that you believe in and trust in, then you can be led by spirit in your everyday life. You can allow yourself to receive divine guidance and to actually follow it. If you're smart, you'll follow it. <laughs> if you don't follow it, sometimes you get into trouble. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, this is a, a good question in relation to that, I think. That sometimes I'm asked, well, how do you know? How do you know, for example, that you have received divine guidance? What is it that tips you off? Yes. Okay. So I, so I have developed an entire 10 test system okay. to test whether the message that you're getting from spirit is the real thing. Mm -hmm. So I've developed this system. There's 10 tests to it. Uh, mm -hmm. It would take me three hours to teach the, the nine, the 10 tests, but <laughs> I can briefly touch on a few of the well, yeah, aspects okay. of the 10 tests, if you, nice if you wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, just so, maybe so give some people an idea of what you're talking about. Yes, yes. So, if you're receiving a message from Spirit with a capital S, if it's truly com coming from the spiritual plane rather than from another plane of existence, because there's basically four planes of existence where you might be getting your message from mm -hmm. there's the spiritual world, the mental world, the astral world, and the environmental world. Mm -hmm. so these four realms of existence. But I recommend that people only get their messages from what I call the spiritual world. 
Mm -hmm. And the spiritual world means being in contact with your higher self, with the deity of your belief or your understanding, mm -hmm. with heaven, if you want to call it heaven, the heavenly realm, or even deceased loved ones who are in the heavenly realm. That's okay, too. You know, all of that is safe. Mm -hmm. And you're certainly going to receive the truth when you're in contact with the spiritual plane. So if you are in contact with the spiritual plane, first of all, you're going to have an experience of being at peace, mm -hmm. of feeling loved, of feeling safe and protected, of feeling integrated and whole, of feeling that you have this, that like, like you're a pillar of inner strength, mm -hmm. that you can feel this expanded awareness and you're totally relaxed and at peace, in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. So when you're coming from that plane, from that level of consciousness, then when you're in contact with a messenger, then the messenger is going to be on the spiritual world. But there are many beings who are not in the spiritual plane. They may be in the astral plane. They may be even earthbound spirits who are in fear, who are in various states of awareness that are not spiritually connected. And some of them might even dupe you. They might fake you out. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you know who or what you're connecting with, who you're, you're talking to. It's yeah. just like if a stranger comes and knocks on your door. I mean, what are you going to say before you let the stranger in, Norm? Sure. What are you, you going to say? Right. And those are good questions, and it's okay to ask that in the spirit world, don't you think? Absolutely. So. Yeah. You're going to ask them, do you come in the name of God, for example? Or do you come in the name of the Christ? And, mm -hmm. you know, what is your name? And yeah. give me a signal. Give me a sign. Uh, show me who, who you are. These are some ways of, of knowing and testing. These are just a few. There's actually books. 10 tests. Mm -hmm. 10. Mm -hmm. One of your books, you talk about this. Do you want to give us a couple of titles of your books? Well... <clears throat> You've Great. Got a good number out. Mm -hmm. I, yes, I have 17 books in print. Yes. And uh, 34 foreign editions. Yeah, that's wonderful. So one of the books would be um, <clears throat> Awaken Your Divine Intuition. Okay, that's the one. Yes. And this book, in this book, it teaches the 10 tests that I talked about. Okay. You can learn the 10 tests in this book. Okay. And, and you can study it. You, know, you don't have to take a class from me. You can actually learn it from the book. What is that published by? It's published by, uh, at this point, it's published by Red Wheel Wiser. Okay. Yeah, so people can get that and they can go to bookstore, Amazon, and so on. That would be a good one to answer a lot of these questions that I've had asked me over the years of how do you know? And uh, Exactly. And people want, I mean, anyone who is a psychic, anyone who is intuitive, anyone who is delving into these realms, that's what they want to know. How do I know it's real? How do yeah. I know I'm not just making it up? Is it my ego talking? Is it an earthbound spirit? Is it a faker spirit? Is somebody trying to fake me out? Mm -hmm. uh, is it my wishful thinking? Yeah, so that's a big one right there. Many people yeah. say, well, that's just my wishful thinking. You know, exactly. Come on now. And exactly. Now real. And okay. emotions can get in the way when it comes to wishful thinking. Do you think that we as a culture uh, have diminish that in young children, the awareness, the sensitivity, and that by the time they're adults, they've lost so much of that, and maybe the people are trying to regain some of that thing that they had at one time. Well, that's really the sad thing, is if a parent says to the child, when the child is telling them about their experiences, if the parent keeps saying, you're just making it up, you're just imagining it, it's not real, none of it's real, that's really not helping the child. It's actually tragic. It's a tragic way to speak to a child mm -hmm. because their imaginary friends are not necessarily imaginary. They That's could be exactly. speaking to divine beings. They might be in touch with ascended masters. So it's, I think it's better for parents to encourage the children sure. if they're having these experiences and to talk to the children about them mm -hmm. and ask them questions about, about what you're experiencing. Even asking them what they look like, describe them. Absolutely, uh, describe and, uh, them yes. and, and find out if they are making them afraid or mm -hmm. if they're playing with them or if they're right. making them feel happy. 
it's important that they know if they're making them afraid because that means that it's not a spiritual being that it's could be a earthbound spirit it could be a demonic being yes mm -hmm. i think that's a good point and i'm glad to hear you enumerate that because you you have this wide variety of experiences behind you going back to the guru himself well yes, i love it yeah so i've been there done it all believe me i've been uh -huh. in touch with the demonic beings i've been possessed I've been, I've been ecstatic with divine beings. I have experienced all the ranges of experiences when it comes to inner contact. Yeah, and I think people need to know that and that they can experience it if they would open themselves up. Now that yeah. leads me to my next question. How do you recommend a person open themselves up to receive this? Well, it's really very simple to do that. Everything that I teach is based upon one principle, and that is ask and it shall be given unto you. Okay. So asking is the best way. And mm -hmm. how, how would we do that? Well, just sit down, be comfortable. The first thing is to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, sitting straight and rigid and uptight, that's not going to get you anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, being in some position that's, that's rigid and straight, just relax, be comfortable, be in a comfortable chair and a comfortable mm -hmm. position and know that comfort is the most important thing about meditation. Yes, it and is. Then, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then take some deep breaths. So mm -hmm. just take deep breaths like this. Mm -hmm. and Full long. deep breaths. Right. Breathe in through the nose. Mm -hmm. Breathing out, it can be the nose or the mouth, it doesn't matter. Just make sure you breathe in through the nose because the nose is designed for breathing in. So breathing in and letting go, you know, completely letting go. And each time you breathe, just let go even more. Just taking three deep breaths like that, after you close your eyes, obviously your eyes have to be closed, first of all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then just taking those deep breaths and then call upon a divine being that you trust, that you know that you trust. You say, maybe call on Jesus if you want, or call upon Saint Germain or Babaji or whoever you want to call upon um, a deity, a Durga, Shiva, whoever, and ask, ask to be taken deeper. Call okay. upon uh, a divine when you say being. Ask. Uh, ask. Ask I'm, for a deep I'm a meditation. That you don't beg. No, you're not begging. You're saying, <laughs> <laughs> you're just saying, well, first of all, it's a good idea to start with an affirmation like this. I am in control. I am one with God. Mm -hmm. I am the only authority in my life. Yes. I am divinely protected by the light of my <laughs> being. I, I close it. off my aura and body mm -hmm. of light to the lower astral levels of mind. And I open to the spiritual world. Thank you, God, and so it is. So starting with an affirmation like that, you're already halfway there because you, you've now, now you're in a state of divine protection. And then you may say, you know, Holy Spirit, you might call, for example, Holy Spirit, take me into a deep meditation. Holy Spirit, bring me an experience of, of inner peace. Bring me an experience of inner ecstasy. That's how to ask. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm basically people, asking in that way. Do not use the word holy. Pardon they just me? Say spirit. They don't say holy spirit, they just say spirit. Um, oh, it's up to you. It's according to your own beliefs. If you like the name Holy Spirit, use that. If you like the name spirit, use that. If you like the word God, use that. They're all good words. I suspect the reason for doing that is to avoid a connection to any particular religious group or organization. Yeah, or even, uh, there's yeah, a lot of mm -hmm, yeah. A lot of people like to make everything generic. Yes. I happen to like the word God. Yeah, what's wrong with it? I don't have a problem with yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just I, I run across these kinds of things. So, well, okay. <laughs> what do you say? The argument is not to convince them otherwise. It's just let them go. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, I, I didn't quite hear what you just said. Okay, I said, it's not, the point is not to convince them to go your way, but to accept the way in which they are receiving the spiritual information, spiritual guidance. If they want to say God, fine, or spirit, you know, that's, that's okay. We need to accept that rather than criticize. 
I agree with you. That's Absolutely. Whatever, whatever works for you, you know, yeah. whatever floats your boat, that's the way to go. As it. long as you're getting the ecstatic experience, you want yes, the end the result. Feel, <laughs> the feeling will convey it without oh, yes. any words. But that. yeah. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question here about this. Uh, I'm going to get personal with you now, uh, Susan. Uh, Absolutely. At what point in your life uh, did you realize you were being spiritually called to do this? Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. That's okay. Great. So um, I was a hippie. It was the 1960s. I was living. Oh, oh, that gets you. <laughs> I was living in the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm proud that I was a hippie. I was a flower child. Those of us who were flower children, it was not just about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Absolutely actually, not. Yes. Good for you. Actually. We were seeking spiritual higher states of consciousness. We were seeking nirvana. And at the time, our gurus were Timothy Leary and Richard Alpert, who later became Ram Dass. Mm -hmm. And they wrote a book called The Psychedelic Experience. And that was our Bible at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was based upon the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And they were telling us to turn on, tune in, and drop out. So that's what I was attempting to do. And I wanted to reach nirvana. And I was reading uh, an enlightenment. And I was reading like Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. I was reading the Buddhist scriptures. I was reading Alan Watts books, including The Way of Zen. And in Alan Watts books, he said that you have to find a quote unquote meditation guide. Well, in 1966 in Berkeley, California, you didn't exactly go to the yellow pages and open them up and look at <laughs> <the> meditation <laughs> <I love guide. laughs> uh, yeah. But I asked a friend, uh, well, so how do I find this meditation guide? Mm -hmm. And he said, have you ever tried to meditate on your own? And I said, well, okay, I'll give it a try. Why not? So I lay on my bed. That's how clueless I was. I didn't even know that you're supposed to sit up when you meditate. I lay down on my bed and I sort of prayed for or asked for a meditation. Immediately, I was propelled into this ecstatic state. I could feel this rush of energy rushing from the tips of my toes all the way to the top of my head. And I felt like I was plugged into this electric socket, but in a most ecstatic way. And this, this energy was just rushing through my body. And I figured, oh, okay, I guess that's meditation. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know that I had not only had my first meditation experience, but also Kundalini awakening yeah. all at the same time without drugs, without any help sure. from LSD or anything. Yeah. I just, it just went into that state. And then I realized, you know, this is the kind of experience I want to have. I tried getting it through drugs uh, a few times. And then I realized, well, I really have to learn real meditation. A friend took me to the Transcendental Meditation Center in Berkeley, California. And as soon as I walked into the center and I saw the picture of the guru up on the wall, and there was this energy that was just beaming from his eyes. I could feel this energy just just transmitting from this picture. And I knew immediately, this is where I'm going to learn real meditation. Mm -hmm. So I ended up actually in his ashrams. Uh, that was Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who later mm -hmm. became the guru of the Beatles. I ended up being living in his ashrams for over two decades. And I was on his personal staff for six years. Mm -hmm. So I spent quite, um, you know, most of my youth with Maharishi or in his various ashrams. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really learned how to meditate in a big way. <laughs> um, I stopped practicing that method. He, he's the founder of Transcendental Meditation. But I yes, stopped I practicing that mm -hmm. method in 1989. Mm -hmm. And I began teaching the method that I teach now, which is called Divine Revelation. Mm -hmm. And my first book was called Divine Revelation. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's good because people need to know that this isn't something you just made up and that you decided I was going to do this 
this really came to you as, uh, as a serial experience, really. And this uh, energy that you received, and the, well, you can use the word awakening if you want. Uh, yeah. that. I know nowadays they have a lot of videos and uh, CDs on meditating and a lot of music now, uh, particularly drumming uh, to help bring people to go into a meditative state. Uh, our minds are so filled with trivia and chatter all the time, everything going on. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to shut that down. I don't think we can shut it down completely, but to bring it under control. Well, shutting it down and trying to bring mindless, it in. I guess I'll receive it. Do you think that we can go into a mindless state uh, in certain meditations, you know, um, where we have uh, no problem? Could I interject here? Sure. We're, we're running short on time now. Okay. And I would like to invite you, Susan, to uh, come to Shaman's Camp in August in Colorado. Oh, wow. And yeah. tell me about that. <laughs> I would, we would love to see you come and teach something at the camp. It's a oh, my goodness. It, I'll tell you more about it off the air, but it's a three-day uh, festival camp in Hot yes. Colorado, up in the mountains. In which town? Hotchkiss. You okay. probably, no Hotchkiss, one's ever heard Colorado. of it. Colorado. Okay. Small little town, but mm -hmm. we have a big uh, fairground here, and that's where we're having it. I well, would I absolutely love to do time. that. Wonderful. Uh, Wonderful. So no, that's August 21st through the 23rd. Mm -hmm. And the okay. website is shamanscamp.com. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Do I have time for one more question? Well, I was going to answer the question you just asked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to know what you, mean by, what you mean by pray it forward. Actually, uh, I was going to address the question you asked before, which was oh, okay. about blanking the mind. Okay. Go ahead. Do that. Okay. One. Uh, if if you're trying to blank your mind, or if you're trying to um, to shut out thoughts, mm -hmm. you're not meditating. That's not yes, meditation. You. Yes. <laughs> okay. All meditation right. is you. about is about re relaxing mm -hmm. and letting go. It's not about control. It's not about trying to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's about letting go and allowing. Yes and uniting your individual spirit with universal spirit. In fact, that's the definition of yoga. Yoga yes, means is. union. Mm -hmm. and, it, and what that means is union of individual spirit with universal spirit. So yoga is not an exercise. It's a state of consciousness. And the experience of yoga is the experience of direct contact with the divine. Yes, it is. I'm into yoga 10 years, 11 years now, I think, on Every Tuesday, it's wonderful, and it isn't wow, just that is powerful all around. Okay, Julia, I thank you very much, Susan. It's been a wonderful pleasure, and we really do ask you to consider coming to Hotchkiss, Colorado. I will. Uh, got some interesting people showing up. Honey. And can I mention my website? And yes, please on? do. All right. So my website is drsusan.org. That's drsusan.org. And I have another website, please visit, which is divinetravels.com. That's plural on the travels, divinetravels.com. And is that doctor spelled out or D-R? Either way, you'll get there either way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you so very much. Us. Thanks for inviting me. I enjoyed talking to you, Norman. And good to meet you, Julia. Good to meet you.